action. Okay. So what we notice is that the stylet sticks out longer than the catheter tip end. Um, this is important to keep in mind when catheterizing. I'm going to just pick this leg up a little bit. I'm going to secure this leg in my own hand and my assistant is restraining, in this case, the fake arm, as well as occluding the vein. Um, and the reason it's important to keep in mind that your stylet piece is longer than the actual catheter is that oftentimes you will enter a vein and only the stylet will be in the vein, but you will be seeing flash. You'll be seeing blood flowing into your catheter. And in a large bore catheter like this, it will fill up with blood very quickly. And at that point, you'll be very tempted to want to advance your catheter into the patient. However, if you're keeping in mind that at that point, perhaps only the needle, the stylet needle, is in the vein, when you try to advance your catheter, it will crumple and catch and won't advance forward. So, with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and get this through the skin, which sometimes takes a little bit of pressure with thick-skinned patients. And then once I see the flash of blood, I'm going to follow the direction, following the direction of the vein, carefully advance both parts, both the catheter and the stylet, one or two millimeters further forward in the, into the arm. And if it's a large patient, I could go several more millimeters than that. And I'm continuing to see blood flowing into the end of my catheter portion here. So now I have to reposition my hand because what we are not doing is the, the, what we like to call the flicking method where we flick the catheter forward into the vein because my fingers are not sterile and I'm technically contaminating the end of this catheter. So what I'll do instead is repositioning my hand, I'll hold the stylet and then take my free hand now and advance the catheter forward off the stylet. And that looks like this. Looks like this. All the way to the hub. What we don't want to be doing is I'll back this out a little bit. is that once you have your vein in place, what you don't want to get into the habit of ever is removing the stylet and then attempting to advance your catheter. Because your catheter is flimsy. It has very little stability. So as you pull your stylet back, this will be flimsy and will, there'll be no um, straightness to that end there. And, and you won't be able to feed it into the vein. All right, so we'll do that one more time. Holding the limb, getting it through the skin, finding the vein, seeing the flash, changing my hand position, pushing the catheter off the stylet all the way to the hub in the skin here. And now when I remove my stylet, this will be patent, so blood will come out. It's okay. Blood is a good thing, right? That means we have a, a patent catheter placement. Um, so don't worry if a little bleeding is happening. What you'll do is remove the stylet. Sometimes you can have, um, if your patient is calm, you can have your assistant occlude the end of the catheter portion um, and keep this from bleeding as you're attaching your attachment pieces. So I will pull the stylet all the way out, remove that temporary cap, and place it there, and then place my thumb on the end of this temporary cap. This way, if my patient moves, my catheter still has stability and doesn't just come flying out. Now my first piece of tape is that piece that we split down the middle, and it's sticky side up, sharps. And I'm lifting up on the catheter body with my thumb, and I'm placing it sticky side up. And then I'm going around 
the catheter hub, sticking that tape to itself, and now I'll come around the top of the catheter and around the limb, keeping the attachment point of the catheter free of tape. Otherwise, I won't be able to attach my injection ports later. And then I want to make sure that that tape is stuck to the catheter and to the patient. Now, it's secure enough for me to remove this temporary cap and apply my T-port set, my injection ports. And to do that, let me just lower that limb a little bit. I'll have this ready to go with this cap loosened making sure that that stays capped and sterile. And then I can remove this cap, temporary cap, and place the T-port adapter onto there. And it, this, in this case, this brand has a lure twist, so I'm going to twist that into place and secure it there. Now I'm ready for that second piece of tape that I prepped. That's the one with the split. And I'll slide that sticky side down below the catheter hub, stick it to the skin of the patient, and then we'll go up at a slight angle and around. Again, I don't want to be covering up this attachment point here in case I need to make changes to the injection ports. There. So my catheter is fairly secure now. The only thing that's remaining is that I need to secure this um, additional accessory injection port. To do that, it's a large dog, so I'm going to use I'm going to do a brown one inch tape. Yeah, I'll just show that as well. Thank you. And I'm going to take this one inch tape and attach it to the T port first. So I want that totally stuck down onto there. Because I want to avoid, if I do just this method, if there's pull on this, it'll eventually slide out, and then that's going to cause occlusion on my catheter. So I'll stick that to the body of the catheter. And depending on positioning of the patient length of the leg, I can adjust it how I need to without creating any kind of occlusion there. So it may need to go facing upward. Generally, in most patients, it can go facing downward unless it's a dachshund. The leg might be too short to do that. And come back around the patient and attach it this way. If this connection creates a kink anywhere, then I could also go below this loop and then back around again, making sure I tab my tape for easy removal. And then one more portion that we do is uh, what we like to call a bra or an anchor tape. So it's half inch tape, about four inches and it's twisted in the middle. And then I'll come up to the teep port portion, and I want to make sure that I have one piece of my anchor tape above this T. And I'll come across, and then one and an X across the other side. The anchor tape ensures that if there's a disconnection here um, at the connection hub, that back pressure is not going to disconnect everything and the patient won't bleed out of their catheter.